Hello, I am Shari Garbani. I'm the founder and director of Project Control Academy, an academy that helps you enhance your knowledge and skills in project control so you can take your career to the next level of success. In this training, I'm going to show you how you can calculate the earned schedule. And I assume you already know what earned schedule is. If not, uh, please make sure that you watch another video that I have prepared for you entitled Earned Schedule and Improvement to Earn Value Management Practice. To measure earned schedule, you need to determine when the work was supposed to be earned. Uh, in other words, at what point in time was the current earned value should have been occurred? This is determined by crossing a horizontal line from your earned value, cumulative earned value, to the planned value curve. And the intersection of that line with your planned value is uh, your earned schedule. Therefore, earned schedule is the point in time when the current earned value was to be accomplished. It is a point at which the project plan value is supposed to be equal to the current earned value. So based on that, can you tell me what is the earned schedule in this example? That's right, it's two months. It was straightforward, wasn't it? However, calculating earned uh, schedule is not always as easy as uh, it was shown in this example. What if uh, the earned schedule falls in between two periods? Uh, for example, in that case, uh, that falls in between two periods. So then how you can calculate earned schedule in that case? So let me show you how you can do that by just walking you through the formulas for earned schedule. So uh, I'm going to my computer screen to show you exactly how you can do that. So when the earned schedule falls in between two periods, just like this example that I showed you, uh, then uh, earned schedule would be calculated by counting the number of planned value periods completed, in our case would be two months, um, and then add the earned fraction of the incomplete period. So we want to know how much is going to be this fraction of time so that we have, uh, we can calculate earned schedule. So now the question is how we can calculate this fraction of the time so that when we can add the complete period to that fraction, we can calculate earned schedule. So let's uh, zoom in the incomplete period to determine how we can calculate that fraction of the time. So by zooming in, here is going to be our graph. Now, in this graph, uh, we want to determine x, right? The fraction of the time where the earned schedule is falling into. To determine x, uh, let's first uh, evaluate what kind of data we have available in this graph. By looking at this, uh, first of all, I know I have my earned value, um, as you can see here, because when I projected my earned value, on my plan value curve, so that's where my earned value and plan value are the same. So I know at this point um, my earned value is equal to my plan value, so I have the value at this point, right? So what other information we have? Let's see. Uh, we also know the plan value for the month of uh, February in our case, so we also have this point known. Another point that we know is this point, which is the plan value for the month of uh, March. So we also have that value as well. Okay, what else we have here? Okay, we know that this is one period. So we know that's one, uh, in our case is one month. So these are all the information that we have. So if I look at this um, graph, then I know I will have P, uh, which would be my earned value minus plan value for the previous month. I also have Q, uh, which is going to be the plan value for the month of March minus the plan value for the month of February, right? That's the difference between these two points, and that's the plan value for the month of March, and that's the plan value for the month of February. So I know that P and Q 
are also um, known so I have those two uh, as well so now if I look at this uh, triangle I can see that I already have P I have Q I have this uh, one so the only unknown area is this side right X so uh, in that triangle uh, by applying some uh, trigonometry then uh, for x, uh, the value that we are trying to determine would be x over 1, which is this one, over 1, uh, would be equal to p over q. So by, because 1 is already 1, we know that, and p and q, these are the values for p and q. Therefore, x, which is the fraction of time we are looking for, would be earned value minus the plan value for the previous month over the plan value of the current month minus the plan value of the previous month. Again, these, these are only for um, the periods that our end schedule is falling into. It doesn't mean exactly previous month or previous period. It might, it might fall um, to pr previous months. So whatever uh, earned schedule is falling into. So these, these, this is only what I'm focusing on and I'm trying to find a fraction of time where my errand schedule is falling into. So it's going to be whatever month it's falling into um, uh, and minus the previous month or the previous period. So if I want to calculate errand schedule, then uh, can you tell me what the errand schedule would be? Yes. So my errand schedule would be the completed period plus uh, that fraction. So to have a more generic formula for errand schedule, I replace those periods with C and C plus 1. And C is basically C and C plus 1 are the number of periods on either side of the intersection of the plan value curve where plan value is equal to errand value. So, um, and here would be my plan value for uh, that period, period C, for plan, that would be plan value for C plus 1, and I know that's earn value equal to plan value, and as I already showed you, we know the values of P and Q, so to determine earn schedule, then earn schedule would be earn value minus plan value for the period C over plan value of period C plus 1 minus plan value of C. So just, uh, again, I don't want you to get confused with this uh, formula. Just remember, uh, your fraction, your x, is p over q, and p is that difference between your earn value minus that plan value, and q is this fraction, which is plan value for c plus 1 minus plan value of c. So that's how you can determine earned schedule. But I have to uh, uh, remind you that to determine the fraction of incomplete period, you know, I assumed here a straight line. Actually, our example was the plan value was quite uh, straight for that one period. Uh, but it, in reality, it might be more like a curve shape. So um, a straight line for one period time of the plan value curve was considered to calculate the earned schedule. So there are some inherent error between the calculated earned schedule and where the earned schedule actually is falling into. So as you can see, it's a very small um, error. And as you know, I already zoomed this period, so it shows bigger than it should be. But that's we are comparing this point with this point, which is not such a big difference. So the error is uh, very small, so you can completely ignore that error and consider this as a straight line or as some straight line for that one period where the fraction of time is falling into. So just be aware that that's how we calculated the earned schedule. Now let me walk you over a sample project so that we can calculate earned schedule together so we can better grasp this concept. This is the example I brought earlier, where my uh, earned schedule fall into two periods. Now we want to calculate earned schedule by, you know, estimating the fraction of time where the earned schedule is falling into. So as you remember from the earned schedule formula, this is our formula for earned schedule. 
So we need to first uh, determine some numbers. First of all, uh, our earned value, as you can see, is 300, right? So what uh, is our plan value? Cumulative plan value for the month of March. That's right, our plan value for the month of March is 400. We also have another uh, information that we can use to calculate our earned schedule, and that is Yes, plan value for the month of February, which is 240. So we have all the information we need to calculate earned schedule. So with that, our earned schedule would be 2 plus 300 minus 240 over 400 minus 240. And again, 2 is uh, the number of complete periods. In our example, is 2 months. So 300 is earned value minus um, plan value for the month of February and over uh, the plan value of the month of March minus the plan value of the month of February, which gives us the earned schedule of 2.375. So this is what our earned schedule is in this example. I hope uh, now you have a better idea about earned schedule and how it's actually calculated. I hope I haven't confused you with the metrics and formulas here. Again, it's a very simple um, mathematic um, calculation that you can use. As long as you understand how earned schedule is calculated, you should be fine. How did you find the calculation of earned schedule? It might look complex, a bit complex, by just a quick glance at the formula, but if you understand how the formula is shaped, you know, you will be fine. You might need to watch this video several times to completely grasp the concept of Aaron's schedule, I mean the formula. And as you could see in this um, training, it's a simple math equation using trigonometry. Uh, so now to determine other metrics using the earned schedule concept, you need to know a couple of more terms. And don't worry, they are not complex, they are easy. The other uh, metric is the actual time, which is the number of periods executed since the, the time that the project started. So in our example, can you tell me what is the actual time? That's right, the actual time is from the beginning to now, which is one, two, three months. So that's easy. So whatever period you're at, it's going to be your actual month, or sorry, actual time. Um, and another metric is planned duration, which is the original duration of the project. So what is the planned duration in this example? That's right, it's six months from the beginning of the project to the time that we are planning to complete the project. So, which is end of June, which is going to be six uh, months. So these were the three key elements to assess the schedule status uh, in units of time. So they were earned schedule, actual time, and planned duration. By having these three metrics, you can now generate other earned schedule indicators and predictors. And I will cover this, I will cover uh, all these earned schedule metrics that you need to know about in the next episode of Project Control Mastery. So if you have any question about this uh, training, uh, please make sure that you uh, write them down below so I can assist you. Also, if you found this training valuable, please hit the like button and share it with your connections. Until the next episode of Project Control Mastery, do your best in everything that you do and make a difference. Hello, this is Shore. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel so you continue to get updates every time that I release new training for you. Simply hit the subscribe button and you will be all set. If you have ever wondered uh, or wanted to learn how to become distinguished for your ability to control and lead projects to a successful completion, I'd like to give you something special that I'm sure you're going to love. I have developed series of training videos on air and value management absolutely for free. Yes, for free. If you have ever wondered what air and value management is and how it can assist you in understanding the true status of your projects, make sure that you watch the EVM training series that I have put together for you.
Just click on the link below this post or go to projectcontroltraining.com forward slash EVM free training and then enter your name and email so I can email you the training video series. Thanks again for tuning in everyone. Until next time that I see you, do your best in everything that you do and make a difference.